If you have a computer virus that seemingly can't be detected, or perhaps it could be detected and removed but it came back, you may have a persistent malware. In this video, I'm going to cover persistent malware as well as how to remove them. This is Nico Knows Tech. Nico Knows Tech, all your tech tips and reviews on deck. Nico Knows Tech, number one channel with the news on deck. Some of the most difficult threats to handle are what's called persistent threats. What a persistent threat is a piece of malware that is designed to withstand being removed by a traditional virus scanner. Or they can be designed to withstand an OS reinstall or both. Now you might have heard about some scary UEFI firmware rootkits that infect a motherboard. However, those are only used in very targeted high profile attacks. So you have a better chance of getting struck by lightning while getting hit by a meteor. Okay, before you go any further, if you don't know what kind of threat you have, you might want to be using my Remove All Viruses uh, video, which has helped over a million people get free of malware, as well as fix a lot of Windows-related issues. It's an all-in-one type of solution that fixes Windows, it make, helps the performance, it does maintenance, as well as removes pretty much any type of malware out there. So if you don't know specifically what type of threat you have, and you don't think that you have a rootkit or a rogue, you might be better off using that video, which again, that's up there, and um, if you want to continue you go ahead and watch this video. The main types of threats that you're likely to encounter are either rogues or rootkits. Rogues are bogus pieces of software which are designed to look like legitimate pieces of software and for that reason oftentimes virus scanners can't detect them as malware. Oftentimes rogues will not even include an uninstall feature so they can be a bit to handle. Another type of threat is a rootkit which is designed to look like a part of the system and oftentimes can replace a driver and can operate at the kernel level so they're often very invisible to virus scanners. Another type of rootkit actually hides on the MBR or a part of the boot sector, the first sectors of a hard disk drive that are often not even viewable by the windows. Well I'm going to show you how to easily remove both of these types of threats. Now to be sure that we've gotten all types of rogues and all types of rootkits, we're going to need three tools and they're all free. The first thing we're going to need is TDSS Killer, we're also going to need Rogue Killer, as well as MBAR, and I'm going to show you where to get these. They also be the links in description. Right now, Big Tech is collecting data on everything you do online and building a profile on you for financial gain, and you don't see a penny of it. Take back your privacy and take back control over your connected life by using a reliable VPN. Unsecure websites and public Wi-Fis are the easiest ways hackers can wreak havoc in your lives. But if you have NordVPN with its military-grade encryption, lightning-fast speed, and over 5,000 servers worldwide, you can browse safely and privately. NordVPN also has state-of-the-art, dedicated peer-to-peer -peer servers to protect your usage from your ISP, as well as Big Brother and with advanced obfuscation servers, you can access blocked websites or even streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu, and more anywhere in the world. NordVPN has a strict no-logs policy and has never and will never be pressured by governments. Take back your privacy today and use my exclusive link in the description to get a huge discount on NordVPN. Stay safe. All right, the first tool we're going to need is TDSS Killer, which we can get from Kaspersky.com. Link is in description. Once you get there, we can scroll down to this part, TDSS Killer, and download the EXE. And you may have trouble downloading these if you're using Chrome and some browsers that might think that this is a threat. The reason they think this might be a threat is because these contain root level drivers that are designed to detect root kits. If the virus detector is a heuristic based detection, it might uh, think that this is a threat. So you might have to force it to allow the download. Rogue Killer is the next one from Adla Software. This is a free software as well. We're going to go ahead and download it here. And finally, we're going to download Malwarebytes Anti Root Kit from bleepingcomputer.com. And once you have all three, you can go ahead and start with TDSS Killer. Just open it up right here. Then we're going to accept the user license agreement. And then we're going to accept the statement. And then the first thing you're going to do is click under here, under Change Parameters. You're going to click on Loaded Modules. Now, once you click this, it's going to trigger a reboot. You're going to need to reboot at this time. I'm not going to reboot for the purpose of this tutorial, but you will. Once you get back, you're going to open up TDSS Killer again, and then you'll go to Change Parameters one more time, and this will automatically be checked already. So you'll just check these two here, and then click OK, and then start the scan. This should take between two to five minutes on most systems. It's scanning the BIOS and all types of uh, system level threats. And TDSS Killer is particularly good at detecting kernel level threats that are rootkits in the, in the system level. All right, it's just about done. And it has found one threat. Okay, 
This is an unsigned file since I checked to verify signatures. And what that means is that Microsoft can't verify the legitimacy of this software. So it's something to look at. However, this is pcpanel.exe. What that is, is um, I use a prototype mixer that's a uh, USB device for controlling my audio called the PC Panel. And it's still on pre-order. So Microsoft's not aware of the existence of this software or this device. So in this case, I know it's fine. If this was a threat, it would be recommending not to skip it, but rather to delete it. So if you detect threats, the next thing you'll do is just click continue. And at that point, if you did find a threat, it would be triggering a reboot and you would want to reboot at that time. So if you found a threat, go ahead and reboot and then come up to the next step. Next thing you'll do is go to where the downloads are again. Next thing we're going to do is run MBAR. We're going to double click on it, then it's going to ask us to extract it to the desktop. You can just click OK and then it'll automatically open it. You hit next and then you'll go ahead and update here and then you'll click next. After that, you can go ahead and leave these things here. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck system. You leave system checked. I already know my system's clean, but I, for the purpose of saving time, I'm gonna skip the system level scan. All right, and you can click scan, and this should take anywhere between five minutes to an hour, depending on your hardware. If you have a traditional mechanical hard disk drive, it'll probably take an hour. Okay, after the scan's finished, I have no malware found. If it did find some threats, you probably will have to reboot your machine and it will ask you to reboot. And so you want to do that. The purpose of rebooting individually rather than running these three steps first and then rebooting all at once is if you have multiple reboots um, pending to remove malware, you can possibly cause your system to go into what's called a boot loop if you don't do these one at a time. Okay, after it's finished, we'll go ahead and click exit. <clears throat> and then the final step is going to be Rogue Killer. And I already have it installed, but what you'll do is you'll click OK, and you'll hit Next, and then hit Next, and it's going to ask you to install it. Okay, I already have it installed, so I'm going to go ahead and open it. All right, once you open up Rogue Killer, this will be the screen that you see. We're going to go straight over to Scan, and then we're going to, right here on the left side, we're going to Scan Everything. We're going to start, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click Driver Loaded. And what the driver loaded is going to do is it's going to be a root level driver that lets us detect root level kits or root kits that are normally invisible to the system. This will also detect other types of malware as well. While we don't really care for Rogue Killer as a all-in-one solution for daily protection, um, we do like to use this as a malware removal tool because of its sensitivity to these types of threats. It will also remove any types of bogus software, um, crypto miners, and so <clears throat> word of warning, if you have any legitimate crypto mining software, you may want to consider backing that up because there's a good chance that Rogue Killer will remove any types of legitimate um, crypto mining software that you may be using. With new and dangerous threats emerging every day, protect yourself and your family with one of the most trusted and advanced security suites ever developed. For over 20 years, Kaspersky has been trusted to protect users large and small, including nuclear power plants, cloud storage data servers, and even entire countries. While keeping the secrets of global significance and personal importance, Kaspersky is trusted to protect hundreds of millions, including the reputations of IT giants. Kaspersky has developed hundreds of patented technologies, which enable Kaspersky's thousands of experts in protecting against countless cyber attacks, including a multi-billion dollar online bank heist. Use the link in the description and put Kaspersky in between you and the bad guys. All right, once the scan is complete, you can go ahead and click on to results. Now it shows one threat here. However, this is a registry key that I created to prevent Windows Defender from reporting um, what it scans to Microsoft. So this is perfectly fine and I can go ahead and uncheck this. You can go ahead and leave everything unchecked, uh, leave everything checked here unless you know exactly what you're doing um, because this is not going to hurt anything on the machine. This would just repair the key back to the way Microsoft had it. However, I don't want that to occur. Then you can click removal. And then once it says removal finished, then you can go ahead and close this. And then if you want, you can go ahead and uninstall Rogue Killer. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. I hope you found this helpful. If you like it, please click like and consider subscribing. Tell me about it, how it worked out for you in the comment section. I'd love to hear about it. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and I'll see you next time.